So, um, welcome to the Songwriter Series. Uh, I first want to honour you uh, for your contribution, for really supporting this to helping to make it happen. Um, so, uh, and I'm really glad you're part of the series as well. Uh, um, could you could you give a just a little bit of a rundown in terms of uh, musical history? And maybe, you know, the relation to song and singing and what was around uh, at the time um, musically. Well, if I make that really fast, I would say Elvis, Little Richard, um, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones and Sanyas. That's it in a nutshell. Musically, they were, they were, the, were the influences for me. And David had a totally different upbringing, like you say. Yeah, I won't say, I won't tell my, <laughs> the artists I was listening to yeah, like in this Schubert context, also. but <laughs> but I had more of a kind of a, a classical upbringing with a, a mother that uh, was a classical musician and, and introduced me to playing violin and piano and, and uh, classical singing. Um, so that was my starting point and it didn't, didn't, touched me that much, the classical music that I really put a lot of energy or was uh, very much attracted to playing or, or being in it. And when I was 20, I met Meten, who introduced me to a whole, a whole world of, of expression that uses music actually in a, in a way of enhancing a silent space and a, or a celebration space. Music as a kind of a ceremonial um, help or support, you know, that the music supports um, meditation, going deeper into silence, or music supports uh, uplifting, dancing, uh, celebration, mood, and, and the sacredness of that music is expressed through using mantras, which are Indian prayers. So for the last, I don't know, decades, <laughs> we've been traveling the planet and uh, sharing this music of uh, mantra and sacred song. We tend to write songs, he didn't say that now, obviously, but I always feel when he, when a song comes for him, it feels to me like it's, it has expressed what I've been feeling with the mantras, you know, with the Indian prayers. It's just in English, <laughs> it's the flowering or the uh, expression what we, yeah, what we want to tune into when we chant the mantra. Let's Let's give you guys an uh, example of, of what Dave is talking about with the Gayatri Mantra, with, with the tambour. You know, this, uh, this Gayatri Mantra, is, it's got its own wings, and uh, we came upon it. Mm, oh, well, Deva came back to it. She was born with the sound of the Gayatri Mantra, her parents, and through the birth, and through her, all her childhood with this mantra and then uh, came to India and into the ashram and uh, let the mantras go and, uh, and became uh, a, a body worker in the ashram. And that's where we met. So the music that we've made ever since that moment has to always appear from silence like we are now. And um, that's what gives it its what gives it its value. Really. Svaha, that's 
That was the mantra that opened my concept of, of composition because I don't, I'd like m many people, I just related to music like, you know, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, chorus, and out, or, you know, like that, that restriction, or, you know, the standard blues. Um, um, timings and everything but um, and structure but but uh, the Gayatri when when Deva came with that it was like uh, it was it was an it was a totally different way of of looking at music it, it, it was circular it just carried on going once you found the the, the key to it, it it you could just you know you can just hang there and everybody can relax and um, Nothing's going to happen unless we make it happen individually, you know. It's just there. And all Dave and I do is connect with that spirit, with that connection. Actually, we don't want anything to happen. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's that. why we sing mantra. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do. F I also I, I feel a responsibility in this role to, uh, to support the energy and the dynamics of a piece. With this, that's that's. Uh, I'm not an accomplished guitar player, but I know where the mantras pulse, and I know where my songs pulse, 
and how they feel. And I, if I relate to it on that level, then I, you know, I'm free of judgment because judgment is the is uh, something that's so, you know, we if, in, inflict on ourselves. I know I did for many, many years. Always, always wanting to write the next song. Always living for the next song, and always. Uh, desperate for what that next song is going to do and I, and I, I, I just lost myself in there you know I had the whole thing I had some good record contracts back in the day like I had a, an album with the Kinks even <laughs> which was amazing to have a, you know those guys playing on my songs and like having no real connection really to each other at all <laughs> You know, it's really interesting time, and um, yeah, so so it freed me up. It was freed me up. Look at that. We just played that. That could have gone on for as long as you wanted. You know, you can just participate. You can step back. You can step back in. You know, it's not there to prove anything, and that's it. Gave me such a different way of being with the music and with the songs and with the compositions. Thank you, Deva. Mm. Brought that into our lives, mm. and David's dad was a big part of that. Dd. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is that uh, I, when I'm uh, leading voice events, I often tell people that whether it's a, a chant, a mantra, or a, a song, original song, or, or a classic song, if there's any real depth there, you'll never get tired of it, and it will keep revealing its depth. Like, for example, I'm still doing the hallelujah uh, from back in the day, but without the so much magnificent bit, bit because it always works. Mm. Um, and it's, um, and that's that? what I found, sorry? How do you mean works? Well, in terms of, uh, for, uh, I lead voice events and which is basically, it's like, well, whether it's a performance or a voice or, or whatever kind of event you're doing, you, you, with, with, you've got your set list and it's, it's, it's the stuff that works, that you know always works. That's, that's the way I, 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 think, I, I mean by it always works. Oh, that's and, such uh, a different concept for us, man. Every time we play it, any song is just up for grabs. That's what keeps us going, that, that same feeling. We don't have any expectation of where that Gayatri Mantra is going to take us, whether it's going to work or not. It's just, it's like somehow opening to this energy and then, uh, and, and hallelujah does that. I understand, I get that. It just op it opens this energy vortex and, uh, but in the end I got a little, I, I got a little tired of it. I got a little like I was performing it. I was making it work. And I knew it was going to work. And, and in the end, I got a little bit... I had to get rid of it for a while, you know, and give it some value again. Because, uh, you know, you can... You know, the, when you're riding on it, like you are with the Hallelujah, you just ride on it, man, and let it take you, you know. But there comes a time, for me anyway, when if I get any kind of feeling of of tiredness then i know it's not the right because at my age my energy levels are really crucial and uh, the music and the singing and the songs are the only thing apart from pilates once a week <laughs> where i'm actually really involved in my body really you know apart from when my wife mm. makes food which she does fantastically you know um. Like, well, okay, coming back to uh, receiving songs, you know, there's this, there's this, when the art of writing songs in, in, a, in a balance between receiving songs and writing songs, there's, there's that balance between when you have that skill, when you can, you receive the song. I mean, for me, for, for, me, for example, I had different experiences where you can receive them in all in one go you know, like from start to finish and kind of is perfectly formed and then you kind of refine it a bit like a lot of the greats, whether it's, you know, whoever you want to mention, Joni Mitchell, John, uh, Leonard Cohen, etc. you know. I mean, where where is it now in terms of receiving songs? Do you just kind of receive them all in one go or do you, do you work, have to work at it? 
Well, they come from all kinds of strange places, really. You know, they definitely, uh, they're not being chased anymore, that's for sure. So, uh, like you, I just let them come. Like, for instance, uh, <laughs> this little song of desperation was written on the beach, just to show you the ir irony of it all when you're writing this song, really. Your guitar. I need a beach I need a place in the sun Somewhere out of reach Somewhere I can run free Free from a world full of trouble and pain Free from a world going insane I need a beach I need a place in the shade Somewhere I can sit down and forgive myself for the mistakes that I made. Free from a world full of trouble and stress, my spirit's strong, but my mind's in a mess. I need a beach. It doesn't have to be in San Tropez. I don't mind Venice Beach down in West LA that'll do me fine Copacabana Malibu Any old beach will do I just need some sand Under my feet Give me a little rocking band Playing the reggae beat Call me crazy, say I'm out of touch But it's the human touch I'm missing so much I need a beach I need a place I can go Ride with the tide Go with the flow Call me crazy, call me brave I'm going out to catch me a wave I need a beach Take me down to Blackpool Town South and on sea Arilla's Beach down in Arilla's Beach clothing optional that's all right with me I got some good friends Down in Byron Bay They got some beaches down there Gonna blow your troubles away Just need some time To get myself straight Slow down my mind And meditate Meditate on this world Full of troubles and fears Meditate on this ocean of tears I need a beach Wash my spirit clean Dancing with my sweetheart In the moonlight waves That kind of scene Oh, Lord, if you can hear me, please Send me down an ocean breeze I need a beach <laughs> somebody, somebody reviewed that on this album we just put out and said uh, he liked uh, the sunny reggae of that piece and... Uh, and uh, that we name checked so many great beaches. It's a song, I, I, I had to just tell him, this is a song of desperation. <laughs> it's a real song of, it's a cry of desperation, man. And the beach is the, is the, what do you call Metaphor. it? The what? Metaphor. The what thing? Metaphor. The, yeah, no, <laughs> something happened with my, it's the, yeah, the beach is a metaphor for meditation. Oh. 
the 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 beach is where you come home and you feel some kind of space from everything and you feel plugged in and you feel alive and that's what uh, the music has the power to do isn't it for all of us you know yeah yeah and uh, really needed at this time and i love the uh, the uh, english references <laughs> yeah I'm playing in South End soon, actually. Oh, really? That's so yeah. nice, Ben. We have some friends down there. Yeah. They've got some beaches down there. Blow yeah. your troubles away. Well, I've been there a couple of times and never actually made it to the beach, but uh, I think I'll go no. a couple of times. Ah. Um, yeah, it's the it's whole scene in South End now. She told me, this friend of mine who lives there, she said, it's really changed. It's really a nice place to hang out. And, and uh, so it feels like uh, it's changed a lot from the... Those days, but South End on Sea. <laughs> it's not a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, it's a crucial place in, in musical legacy in England. South End on Sea spawned some really great music mm -hmm. down there, didn't it, Ravi? I, I don't know the hi musical history of South End on Sea, to be honest. Uh, Blackpool, oh. I'm a little bit more aware of because uh, that's where we used to go um, when, we, when we were young. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Blackpool, Blackpool Town. Yeah, that's the first time I ever, you know, that's that that little song. It it it's one of the things. It, it in the end, you have to find other ways to show your gratitude. And you know, for many many years, uh, that was easy for me because I had a guru, I had a master, and all my energy and all my focus was how many times can I thank him? I'll never thank him enough. So, you know, all these songs were just pouring out of me like falling leaves, you know, and whispers in a hurricane and they just kept coming and I just kept playing them and uh, didn't have any pretensions or ambitions around anything. I just was wanting to sing. And then, uh, and then coming to Osho and, and hearing Sufi mantras or or hallelujah, whatever, all those things where everybody was singing together, it blew my mind. I, I was like, oh, well, I'm not in any way, um, you know, um, this was too, too, uh, too big for me to, to comprehend when I saw hundreds and hundreds of people all singing. Uh, and uh, anyway, I didn't want anyone to know that I'd been a musician, so I wanted to drop all that when I came to Osho. So I came naked. I didn't want to be a musician. I didn't want to carry any kind of cross anymore. Thank you very much. I had it. I did it. Let me get out of here because it's killing me. And, uh, and I'd somehow through a series of events, I came to Osho and uh, Osho showed me the value of music. I didn't have to play. I just had to feel it. And I spent years just feeling it. And it's all, all in all its, uh, you know, superficiality of the music we were making in the ashram and uh, and the self-consciousness. It had an energy, it had love, and it had an acceptance that we were all children playing and learning together. And uh, that kind of community just happens once in your life if you're lucky. And I, I was lucky enough, so I spent all those years waiting to meet Deva in the ashram like 20 years later or something and we met in the most beautiful circumstances which uh, maybe we'll go into I don't know if it's worth it but but anyway we we started uh, this and and usually I don't talk so much but I asked Deva if she'd stay with me and uh, I don't know I just felt like uh, for the obvious reason. And uh, because I, I also just veering off a little, I want to say that Deva, through the last album that Deva made, uh, was called Deva. And it was the first album that I'd given up any kind of uh, part production in. Uh, every album up until that point, I knew who I wanted to bring in, I knew what I wanted to hear, and these people could help me and bring their energy into it. So. But but on the Deva album, Joe B. Baker, I kind of handed in the mantle, really, 
and, and just told him, look, you know, I've done as much as I can. And, uh, and Joby wanted to hear Dave compose something. And he was very into uh, creating the space for her to compose. And that album came out called Dave Got Us a Grammy nomination. And that was like a, a, the most beautiful, sense, soft, soft album. And, uh, and it's such a healing. It's such a healing, that album. When I said in my heart, open surgery, that mantra was played at my rebirth, just like it was played at mm. Dave's birth. It was being played at my rebirth. I never realized that, mm. did you? Mm. That was a vulture coming. So, uh, thank you, Miten. And if I can bring in Deva, um, and thanks for bringing up uh, Deva's album, um, because uh, one of the subjects as well as songwriting is composition. So, um, Deva, how much were you involved in the compositional aspects of that album? And, and, and can you talk about that and how significant that was for you? Hmm. Yeah, just I never saw myself as a as a composer. I mean, I just never composed maybe two mantras together with Miten and the flow kind of. But this feeling like here's the mantra. Now you're gonna out of out of nothing you'll create this melody. Now and always I just actually <coughs> mostly I didn't give it the space. You know, just the the uh, space for that to happen. The time, the energy, just like here I am. I'm gonna be open to what comes. I, I didn't do that, so I think that that was the main reason why it didn't ha happen earlier, um, and also because when I then embarked on that journey of trying to find a melody for this mantra that is so precious to me and that is so such a huge honor to create a melody for. You know, it's the most. It's the oldest mantra known to man. It's the most important mantra in the world. And, and I'm going to... It's also known to women also. Okay, uh, sorry, with my English. Um, <coughs> to mankind, I guess, yeah. to human. Humans, humanity. Um, I just felt like uh, that kind of... Um, who am I to create a melody that I ask people to sing? Mm. You know, like, it, I think it's such a huge, like, this is the melody and you're going to sing it. You're going to go this, to this note and not to this note. You know, like, this is it. You know, this is the melody. And I feel it's quite a, quite some, you need to have quite some self-respect to feel like, yeah, I'm, this is my song and this is it. And we're all going to sing this. And then for the mantra, you know, you, this is a prayer. So does this melody do it justice? Does this melody actually disappear in the in the prayer because the melody is only to to carry the prayer it's not to overpower the prayer and you know mantras are in some ways easy because they they are not verse and chorus and they, have, they don't have to have this melody that goes from you know over octaves so you know it's like a big kind of symphon symphonic experience but in the simplicity, there's also the magic, you know. Sometimes it's just the chord changes. And actually with this Gayatri, seven chakra Gayatri mantra that I did, then find a melody for which, that's what it felt like. I, f I found the melody. It, it, it came and then there was two or three adjustments and then it felt like this is it. And it really felt like now it's got nothing to do with me anymore. Like this is the melody. I actually was surprised to feel that. And in that melody, there's so much actually on one note, but it's the chords that make the melody incredible. And that was Joby's magic, you know. He just uh, has that ear and that um, the, 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 the fantasy, you know, what, and, what, and, what and, it can and, sound like. And he has the wherewithal to do it. He yeah. can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he has the, the, uh, the wisdom and the knowledge. To, and to bring forth. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, what a great producer yeah. is too. Yeah, so now I don't really see it as my melody anymore. It's just that is really the melody. Mm. 
on that album for that. I mean, of course, there's many melodies for the same mantra, but this it, there's no question mark anymore, you know. And I thought maybe when you create something, you'll forever wonder if this is really the end yet. Like with a painting, have you really finished the painting? Has this really been the last stroke? Or maybe you could do it just a bit better, you know. Mm. So it's interesting to, f to experience that. Well, also, you know, the songs grow. If you think of, and, and now I'm thinking, it would be really nice for you to play on piano. Mm -hmm. Or, you mm. know, and it's your mode, because you, mm. that's how you composed it. What, what happened for us is that we kind of boiled it down to some kind of guitar chords that I can play and to make it feel the same kind of uh, 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 following the, the complex complexity of the chords on a real basic level so that the song is carried, but it's not... Uh, it's not an intrusive thing that the guitar is doing. It's, it's uh, almost kind of lost, mm. actually, because it's such a complex piece. But uh, Thank you. 
And um, of course, I, having also had a history with Joby, Joby Baker, I could not have uh, wished a more suitable producer um, and someone to work with to, um, you know, to take everything to another level and to, mm. to create this, uh, this version of the Gayatri. Um, so, um, does that mean there's going to be another, uh, there's going to be more of that in the future? Yeah. I mean, there's now, actually this time now we, I composed actually quite a few melodies, you know, with Miten's support and, and putting it into a certain uh, structure and accords and, but the, the, the melodies came also just like that, you know, they came out of the mantra. And, uh, They're very simple melodies, yeah. like uh, Um Durga was like. Oh yeah, that's, that. no, not now, that's fine. Right. <laughs> so, so now the doors, the floodgates are open for a composition to happen. It's good. This is, a, this is actually a mantra for the removal of epidemics. It's for the Tara that, that is the one who removes epidemics. So we, we made this melody. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Nama Tare Manohar Om Haraswar Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Nama Tare Manohar Om Haraswar Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Nama Tare Manohar Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Nama Tare Manohara Om Hara And so on, 100 late cycles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to, play, to, to, to chant the Gayatri 108 cycles, it takes about 20 minutes. And uh, it, you can really go on a trip on it, man. You, especially because, you know, that's all you've got. You've got the basic note, and you and you've got the sort of groove, like the way we play it is. Om Bhuvo Vasa Tatsavi Tu Hari. Argo Devasya Dimai Dio Yuna Prachodaya. Om Bhuvo Vasa Tatsavi Tu Hari. Argo Devasya Dimai Dio Yuna Prachodaya. Om Bhuvo Vasa Tatsavi Tu Hari. Argo Devasya Dimai Dio Yuna Prachodaya. And. Uh, and you can just ride, ride it. You can just ride on it, you know. Just you you might, you, you might have forgotten, Mitten, actually, that I, or uh, that I actually stood in for you once when you didn't make it in time for Angsbacker when we started, and that was my first experience of singing the Gayatri mantra for that length. Oh, uh, wow. Do you remember that, Deva? It was oh, the beginning yes. of Angsbacker, and uh, yes. it so uh, it was it was very profound. Very, I've, I've had a few experiences like that of singing the the, the Gayatri mantra for that long. Or chanting it, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so I know what you mean. It's very, very profound, very, very deep experience. You have to trust it, don't you? You have to trust that you're going to get bored, and it's okay. You can, because there's a moment when, oh, I'm back in it. I was bored, but now I'm back in it again, and it's still there for you. It's still going on. It's still like this benevolent thing. It hasn't. Okay, you stop, so I'm going to stop. It just continues to roll, and you can jump back on at any time and come back and get back in there into the energy flow. That's what I love about the mantras. That's what I'm trying to create. I'd love to create that. I was just saying to the guys in our band, we call them, but you know, Spencer and, and uh, Miles, we were just saying, you know, it would be so nice to... to uh, uh, dance is not the right word, but to uh, 
to to move the energy in a different way from these mantras so so that if you imagine really nice pulsing beautiful playing from these guys and us just chanting like that it could be so strong and transformational you mm. know and uh, you don't have to rehearse it you just have to trust you have to write the right musicians who trust themselves to go there and uh, they're learning those guys what w of our world it's totally different for them and uh, and they've got all the all the they've not only got the chops but they've also got the really respect us sometimes too much because i want more i want more of them sometimes and uh um, and that's what we were talking about, you know, to actually take that Gayatri mantra and just make it this uh, a, a celebration of movement as well as uh, uh, as well as the healing energy of the mantra, but actually dancing to it, you know, moving. Because I think we, me and you and Deva, we came across probably the only guru or only master who danced with his people. If you think about it, you know, you think, go back to Buddha, and no, I don't think so, or Krishnamurti, or even any, any, any you know, Nim Karoli Rawa, nobody danced, only Osho. And that's such a fundamental thing that gave me a touch of, wow, this is different, this is from the earth, and, you know, and from the body. Yeah, did I go off again? No, sorry. <laughs> Well, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, this is, you know, that this series is also a conversation. And from my own experience, I mean, you can say as as facilitators or uh, troubadours or the various words you can use, it's it's also a different experience when you're you're offering these, you're 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 supporting people to dive deep into these experiences. So, I mean, what I, my experience recently, I'm really starting to get more and more that you know I'm when you're captain of the ship, when you're move, you're facilitating, as it were, you've got to actually work quite hard as well, which I like personally, you know, because I, I really, um, and, you know, I, and also I'm working very acoustically as well. So I, I'm, it's, it's really pushing my voice as well. So, um, so, uh, you know, there's also, it's also energy work as well. Uh, that's what I found in recent years uh, with the, the events that I'm doing, um, whether it's whether it's a whether it's a song or whether it's a mantra, um, and um, so um, and I've just realised I'm not sure where I'm going with this or, or what the point was, um, but um, but anyway, um, was there any more songs or, or mantras you, you had in mind? It was the Teate? then you can join us maybe we'll we'll leave you a space in uh, and uh, no just we, we'll just leave you a space anyway but yeah join us man that would be nice <laughs> we'll do it in in b b minor on b that'd be nice we just did it in a yeah up but there. I, I, okay oh yeah <laughs> it's t oh, okay oh yeah all right so a minor that's good for you Na 
sharing this one it's David I said a prayer for the homeless I pray no life is lived in vain I lit a candle and I stepped out into the pouring rain. I went looking for the mother inside. World turning, I cried. Tears of redemption and forgiveness. I crossed that river looking for a witness. I was reaching out. Reaching for the mother inside Rain, Rain fell, fell down, down. Sorry, do it again Rain, Rain 
fell down like the tears of the virgin, tears of joy for all souls emerging as they reach for the mother inside. The sun rose at midnight, everything changed. My plans, my dreams, all rearranged. I went singing, I went singing for the mother inside. Am I young? Shakti. the skin unprotected searching 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 for the mother inside birth and death in every breath one lover after another as we serve For the mother inside Never give up 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 What did we do? We took too much of you. Reaching out, looking for the mother inside. Inside. Huh. Don't. Why do you need to unplug it? Uh, <laughs> do you want to hold it? Do you want to hold it? Yeah. I, I don't know what we're going to do. Thanks. Uh, I was hoping you were going to play another song. Another, another one? No, no. The one you just played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I like that song. It's, I don't know. It's just uh, it's so easy to sing, I think. It's, uh, I think it's anyway, it's my story, of course. I like that Paul McCartney wrote that for his mother, Let It Be. I thought it was so beautiful to put your mother in a song. And he says he wakes up to the sound of music. He even says that in the song. Mother Mary comes to me. What a guy, man. Put that in a song. Oh, it's a prayer, you know, to his mother. It's beautiful. I mean, if he never wrote another song, man, he just, he was on fire in that Let It Be era, Paul. Long and winding road, you know, get back, let it be, hey Jude. He was really com coming forth with full on Paul McCartney. <laughs> he, was, he was full on Paul McCartney there. And they were all swept aside in a way. John wasn't, John, John was in such a different place. John, uh, John wrote one for his mother as well, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Julia, there's a few of them actually. Mother, you had me, but I never had you. That's pretty intense. Amazing, these guys, man. I, that was back there in the 60s, and they were really opening our little sort of little minds to, uh, <laughs> to, to things like that. I remember there was once, 
one song on that David Crosby had written called Triad. And he's like, I don't really see why we can't go on as three. That was the sort of uh, thing, you know. And uh, yeah, so beautiful back then. So, uh, no, really, I mean, you know, it, the relationships are so easily... S so, anyway, let's not go there. But, <laughs> but uh, Robbie, do you have another question? <laughs> <laughs> Get him off the subject. <laughs> no, uh, I've actually, we've actually come to the end, but, um, you know, thanks for everything and for sharing the mantras and the songs that you've shared. Um, and thanks for being part of this, this uh, songwriter series. And uh, yeah. And we wish you all the best. Thanks, all Ravi. the best with it, Ravi. And you, Paul. Thank mm. you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for mm. all. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Paul. Yeah.